well, last Sunday morning, um, we had we finished up this chapter about um, facing facts. We kind of ended with a discussion about vision and values and state value statements and things like that. Uh, was there anything after we left that anybody wants to bring up, <clears throat> kind of rounding out lesson three before we jump into lesson four? So I think that that theme will come up again at the end, towards the end of this lesson, and maybe a little bit later in our study. I did find question 16 interesting, and there's some of the words, I, as I read that, I changed them. Um, instead of saying, as we have discussed, our biggest obstacle in moving forward will be a lack of courage. You know, I, I, I kind of scratched that out and said, an obstacle moving forward, you know, might be a lack of courage. Because I don't really, I don't think that's our biggest obstacle. At least I don't think that's our biggest obstacle with, with our group. But it is an obstacle. And that sometime during this journey, you know, we might be um, a little uncomfortable. I don't think that we're going to make people very uncomfortable, like the, like the question says. And so I changed those words a little bit because I really think that focuses on the spirit of which I want to approach this. And as we build upon what we studied last quarter, being with one another... at my line of work in the morning report starts at 7 inevitably someone comes in at 705 that's not fair to night shift I make them start at 7 that's it on time is on time 
I can't imagine a very large group of people having one person having so much control over them. Shame on them. And on my little, my little comment was Susan rang the bell late. Shame on Susan. Yeah. Uh, she has a lot of power over these people. They allowed her to do that. Uh, someone said years ago, talk about the ones that are always late. He said he observed that they was much jollier than the ones that had to wait on them. Why that was, there's a whole host of reasons why we may not have left early enough. But the fact of the matter is, the only reason you're late is you did not leave early enough. Um, all right. Anything else about the Susan story? Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a lot. All right. Is there any sections in here you guys that you want to talk about? Because there's a lot of individual. But it's a lot of the same thing in different scenarios. Uh, when you look at uh, the responsibility, uh, the reaction of Saul to David. I mean, Saul had a responsibility to lead his army, and he didn't do that. And the the reaction that he had to David stepping up and doing it led to hatred and jealousy and anger and you know, led to a long history of bad blood between the two. And if you look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel had the responsibility to go tell, you know, the children of Israel. I, I did find, um, I highlighted it, but now I can't find it. In Ezekiel 3.11, where it says, And go to the, to the captives, to the children of your people, and speak to them, and tell them. Thus says the Lord of God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. So it was the responsibility of Ezekiel to take the message, and it, he wasn't responsible for the outcome. And I made a note over in the notes section of Jonah faced the same thing. It was his responsibility to go to Nineveh, take a message to them. And, you know, Ezekiel did his part. Jonah did not. And so there's a responsibility to do what was, what they were instructed to do. And we see different reactions through that. Anything interesting about the section on Ezekiel that you guys want to talk about? Because when you look at, it kind of gives a, an example of inactivity. And what we find a lot is, you know, 
that's a lot of the challenge that we find. And that's really a lot of what this chapter is talking about is accountability and responsibility that helps keep us active. Because when left to kind of our own devices and what we want to do, we will become, we naturally become inactive. And it's kind of a, just a natural, natural history, not a natural history, a natural result when there's no direction. I did like the definitions over on the second page. So it's responsibility, a duty that one is obligated to fulfill, i.e. song leader has the duty to pick out songs, pitch them correctly. I mean, that's, that's an optional responsibility. That's more, of a, that's more of a goal than I think a responsibility is to pitch them correctly. And then to lead us in songs. Accountable, accountability is being held liable for the action of the responsibility. You know, a song leader must be at the services to fulfill his responsibility, must be here on time, um, and make preparation beforehand. So there's a difference in responsibility and the accountability. So responsibility is something that you are obligated to do. Accountability is do you do it to the, to the right manner and to a, do, a, do you do a good job with it? All right, it's Wednesday. Wednesday is typically a talkative night. And you guys are not talkative tonight. So, comments, questions? If not, we'll just burn on through this. And I can talk about accountability. Schedule. When you're put on the schedule, you should know ahead of time your responsibility yeah. and are you going to be accountable to that responsibility somebody well he so and so is going to be there you got I, they got it covered and we don't yeah, figure out well, there's enough people there sometimes there's not enough people here and so i feel like we could do better at being more responsible i guess i know we shouldn't need a wrangler we should not. I was going to say that's the reason we have a Wrangler yeah. is because... We used to not. And, I mean, if you were, you got the schedule, if not, let somebody else know that you're not going to be there. Could they do that? Or go down the food, you go down the chain, line, chain and see, okay, somebody else can do that. But, yeah, that's... One of my, I think we could probably do better on that, some of the responsibilities that we have here. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Right. Yeah, you get that text message the day before um, noontime. You know, if your phone goes off at noon, you're like, ah, I got something to do tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, when you look at uh, Ezekiel, uh, God goes out of his way to tell the prophet, you know, uh, these people are not speaking a foreign language. They understand what you're saying. They hear you. They know what they know the words, but they won't listen to you because they don't listen to me. And I think God's making a very specific point about responsibility. If you don't know what your responsibility if, if someone just assumes it's your responsibility, they may have assumed incorrectly. And God is not taking the chance that they don't know their responsibility is listen to the Word of God. So he makes sure that they're instructed, even though he's quite confident they're not willing to hear it and, and put it into action. But to be held accountable or to be judged for that lack of fulfillment of the responsibility, God says, go ahead and tell them. They don't care, but tell them anyway. And that's... That's an important aspect of holding someone accountable. You have to know that they know they were held accountable or, or that they were responsible, excuse me, before you can hold them accountable. Yeah, there's a, a f acronym that we use in business called OR. Ownership, Accountability, Responsibility. 
you have to know you're responsible for it before you can be held accountable to it. And the best way to be responsible and accountable to it is you have to have ownership of it. So if you have ownership of a job, it's, it's easier to be accountable and responsible. And, and in our work in the kingdom and our efforts to God, if we, if we truly take ownership, it is my responsibility to do whatever I have the talents to do, then it's easier for us to accept responsibility, accept accountability for that. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of messages in Scripture that God says, they're not going to listen, but I'm going to tell them anyway. I'm going to tell them, and I'm going to tell them over and over and over again, and hoping that it does sink in that, that, that they'll do something different. Now, you didn't, you didn't raise your hand, check on his way to Pat, and then he will come to you. I was reading the last sentence uh, uh, before relief to the brethren, but it had to do with uh, still in the Ezekiel part. If, if I would volunteer, or would you volunteer to be the one uh, like Ezekiel for the congregation? That's quite an undertaking it if is. you have a lot of dry bones. It just, uh, what do you do to stir and to get people to that point that they want to uh, be enthusiastic mm -hmm. with service to God. Yeah, that is a big undertaking. And especially if you get in, in if you do have a lot of inactivity. Um, luckily, I don't feel that we're there. Now, I don't think that we are a bunch of dry bones that are, are really, you know, very inactive. I, I think we need just a little bit more encouragement. Yes, Dan. Well, I'm going to tie this into our last family discussion and say, if we, is it the preacher's responsibility or his accountability to make sure his message is effective and heard, or is it the responsibility or the accountability are we accountable as listeners to take whatever is being taught and make it effective in our lives in our so it's not like you know i get up there once every couple months and and bring a lesson i know i cannot necessarily be effective because of and my and my responsibility is not as a i don't want to call it a professional but as someone whose vocation is to speak and bring lessons all the time but is that a since that is a person whose vocation is is hired to do that? Is he is how, where is the accountability? I mean, is is it on the the person bringing the lesson when that is their vocation? Versus is it still as long as he's bringing forth the word? Is it our responsibility and our and our accountability responsibility to? do that. I mean, that's kind of one of those, mm -hmm. where does the, and I, I, I know probably yes is the answer, but, but, <laughs> but it looks like, looks like, looks like Brace or, or somebody over there has a, their hand up to answer that question. Well, on the, on the last page, I wrote, shepherd, deacon, evangelist, member, responsible for a big question mark. You know, what, what are we at, in each role, what are you responsible for? Yes, Samantha. Dan, to answer your question, I think it's both. <laughs> because, because, I mean, um, everybody, like, I've heard many, many, many different people preach. Not everybody has the same style. And so some people I do have to work harder at to get something out of what they're saying um, just because their style doesn't click with how my brain works, which is fine. But also, I think a preacher would need to know his audience and what approach is best because not because not every approach is going to work with every single person and I, I hope that makes some kind of sense it does and i think there's i think there's a balance i do think just like samantha said it falls on both parties it respond it falls on an event full-time evangelist it's his job to present what needs talked about 
sometimes hard stuff, sometimes encouraging, motivating, sometimes... You know, things to make you ponder and think and evidences and to bring a balance. And you don't want a hobby preacher. Somebody gets up there and just, it's all, it's all the same thing packaged in a different package. It's the, it's the same message. You want, a, you want a variety. So they have a responsibility to bring a balanced approach. And we as members have a responsibility to go into this with a spirit of wanting to learn. You know, what can I learn from this? You know, it's been, it's been interesting over the last, what, six, eight months in the, the way we're doing this, the different approaches and the different things that you pick up from just different preaching styles different lesson styles, you know, some PowerPoint, some not PowerPoint, some logical, some more emotional based, some young people, some older people. It's been, a re it's been really good to see the variety. But yeah, I think as anytime you have an opportunity to get up and speak in front of a group of people, um, about the Word of God, we have a responsibility to take that opportunity seriously. Even if it's a Wednesday night invitation, you know, do you have some thought into it? And what is, what do you want people to walk away feeling or thinking? Um, in my John Maxwell um, speaker certification journey, that's the number one question you have to answer before you get up and speak, is what do you want your listeners to do, feel, or think? Because it's not about you. It's not about the speaker. It's about what is, what is the message that your audience needs to hear, and what do you want them to do about it? Uh, it's, there's, in one of the books, I read Abraham Lincoln uh, would go to... Um, churches, and he would always sit in the back to not distract, and so he had a driver that would take him there, or take his buggy there, or whatever, and on the way, he dropped him off one night, was taking him back, and he asked Abraham Lincoln what was the, was the message good? He said it was a fine message. You know, it was biblically based, it was solid, it was presented well. So, so the guy said, so it was good. He said, not really, because there was no action to it. It was just a base information. It didn't provoke any, any action. And so that's something that we have to think about is do, what is your responsibility in your message to spark people to action? What do you want them to do? And not everybody will catch it. You know, you could, get, you could give a lesson and to 50 people and 35 people get it and 15 people may not. It just may not resonate with them. All right. So when we look at the relief for the brethren in Judea, you know, if you look at responsibility and accountability, you know, Paul and Barnabas stepped up, and it was their responsibility to deliver funds to is it Antioch. No, to. Jerusalem, yeah, from Antioch to Jerusalem. You know, they had a responsibility to deliver it there. And this got into an interesting conversation or discussion that I really hadn't given much thought to, and that's the responsibility of a treasurer and the responsibility of the guys that collect the money and count the money. You know, there is a responsibility that they have, a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that those funds are used appropriately that they get everything that gets dropped into that plate gets put into the envelope and put to, given to the bank. Um, which is why, you know, it makes sense to have men of good character that you trust that are morally sound to participate in that. And there was a time, one time, somebody, one person went up and counted money. And it was said that we should have two people. And I didn't want really to think a whole lot about it. 
And so we, we had a conversation about that, and it's just to eliminate blame. Because if one person, only one person is there, then there, there's a little, you open, shelf, open yourself up to a little bit of risk. But if you have two people, it's a, it's a less, there's less temptation, less potential for danger. And so I thought about the, the job, of, the role of a treasurer and the responsibility that they do have. And they are accountable for, you know, the financial money of the church. To make sure anything gets paid out, gets paid out, you know, to the right, to the right people in the right time. You know, those that we support financially, <clears throat> do they get their do they get their support in a timely manner? Because this is a lot of people they rely on this for their livelihood. So if you had a treasurer that's not very responsible, that well, I'll get around to send money to them, you know, next week and the next week. And so that there comes a responsibility to that. And typically, you know, this is a position that people, you know, step up and do and and take on as as a as a work. I did like um, over on the right hand side of page twenty nine. <clears throat> that Paul told Titus that our people are to maintain good works in Titus 3.14. It says, it says that our people will learn to maintain good works. And I thought that was an important point because as we start talking about being accountable and being responsible, this is a learned behavior that sometimes when you first start doing something, uh, participating, you may not realize the seriousness of it, the, the commitment that you're making. So this is something that we will learn, that we will learn to maintain good works. And as, as you get older, it gets easier and easier to you know, accept your responsibilities, fulfill them, and do the things that you need to do. Okay. <laughs> Andrew's mental guy is Elizabeth and Andrew. It's kind of silly, but it makes me think of Spider-Man. And like with great power comes great responsibility. And God entrusted us with great power in his word. And so we must be responsible to share that with others and be held accountable if we don't. Absolutely. Do you guys know the story of everybody, somebody, nobody, and anybody? You guys ever is, have you ever heard that story? It's real. It's real quick. So for those of you that haven't, someone here may not may be like, "What? What are you talking about?" So there's this little quick story. Uh, this is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. You know, there was an important job that needed to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. 
Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job and everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. So it goes back to kind of what Andrew was saying, that you know, if we wait for something to get done, there are a lot of things go that anybody could do. You know, any, any one person could accomplish this. You know, anyone, everyone, every one of us could, you know, send out cards, send out text messages, check up on somebody. There, there's so much stuff that we individually can be doing that's not public facing, that is behind the scenes, that it is our responsibility to do it. But when there's no one checking up on you, who are you accountable to? Yes, Greg. Uh, you talk talking about it. You know, everyone can do it. I'm just warning everyone. Uh, I'm going to be sitting in on the ladies' meetings going forward because I like to cook and I can cook, and I intend to do that for other people. But to Andrew's point, we'll have a quick little meeting and we'll say, "Someone needs food." I've never seen anyone go hungry in this place. I can guarantee you. Right. And my refrigerator is overloaded with leftovers, and all my people have left the house. But it's about making sure that if I am that someone that's waiting for the other anybody's to take care of it, realize that I probably have the ability myself to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it, in terms of things like uh, teaching little people's classes or seeing to food for someone who can't get out or those kind of things that we kind of assign. Well, that's kind of the lady's function. That's kind of a man's function. Again, we've got some public duties to where there's really not much question that there may be certain qualifications, but put yourself in the place of those functions and those opportunities that you never have because you've assigned a gender role to them. Mm -hmm. And that may just be tradition. That may have nothing to do with one's ability to fulfill that role. <clears throat> yeah, I think there's a lot of tradition to the, the women's meeting up here in the front. Um, all right. Anything else about that section? About responsibilities to, you know, this was a, this was a work of the church that was being done. They, they, were, they were serving members. This was very public, very, you know, members took their money, gave them to someone that they felt was responsible. This was a physical activity. And so we talked a little bit about the, the schedule, a little bit about the need for a wrangler, and a little bit about making sure that if I have a responsibility, that it's my responsibility to make sure that it's covered either by A, showing up and doing it, or B, finding a replacement. The cool thing, and I'll promote the app again, if you have the Congregate app, everybody's phone number is at your fingertips in your app. You can call them, you can text them, you can find their numbers and addresses any anytime, any place that you need them. They are in your phone, typically in your pocket. Um, I use it a lot. Uh, it's got all the information in there as we continue to keep the up the directory updated. But there is there's a lot of good lot of good stuff that gets done and we need to we need to be a people that holds ourselves and each other accountable to fulfill your duties. The things that we are responsible to do, um, we need to make sure that if we accept responsibility for it, that we are accountable to get it done. What's the best way to get something done with accountability? Give it a deadline. You know, when are you going to do this? Because it's easy. It's easy to let stuff fall down your to-do list. Fall down your to-do list. We've got two microphones and a mixer back there that have been there for a long time. They're supposed to go right here and right here, and the mixer is going to help us balance the sound for those online. I took the responsibility to put them in. 
and they're still back there because it keeps falling down the list of things that get prioritized above them. And it's easy for that stuff to get, you know, down the list. I have ordered the lights. They are, will be at my house this week. Um, we got two lights we need to replace. And so I took responsibility to get them ordered. I ordered them the other night. So they'll be here this week. Um, because, again, that had a deadline on it. Because the fire marshal said it had to be done by the end of the month. So it had a deadline, so I had to do it. Uh, these don't have a deadline. Um, December 31st. That sounds like a good deadline. Um, hold me accountable to that. December 31st, we'll have, micro and have the new microphones in here. I'll, I'll make sure that we get that done. And I've had people say, just let me know and I'll help you. But it's just a matter of, you know, taking that initiative to get it done. All right. So if we start looking at the whole body, we've got about five minutes left in class. Um, start getting into the whole body. And that, that's really the activity that we as a group can do behind the scenes, individually, all the different things, the cooking of food, the visiting people, calling people, you know, organizing um, evening get-togethers, organizing singings, all that stuff falls in this last section. And, you know, it says there every Christian has a responsibility to teach others. And there's a, there's a couple different ways to teach others. You can teach others in private. You can teach others in public. Or realistically, we can teach others by our example. Um, there's a lot to be said for teaching others when, in the way that we conduct our lives. And it's a way that we help others in our lives. So what are some ways that, that we can help one another in the small roles? The small things that get done. How can we, how can we be responsible, hold each other accountable? You know, Andrew mentioned the, these groups that we put together. You know, what are some accountability and responsibility measures to, that go with, that, with those? You guys are fantastic. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, the group, I guess, is just having somebody to be held accountable to, like Aaron, like said, I will help you put down the, you know, like, okay, well, and, and again, a deadline. So get, just get some, some other, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you want to be a mentor, you know, which would be a good thing to do is teaching somebody. By good example, well, take them alongside. Go visit with some, somebody who doesn't feel comfortable going into somebody's home or, you know. Yeah. He's on his way. Thank you. So I think the, uh, one of the biggest um, things that can, that can happen is... Um, we can be well intentioned. We have good intentions that we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get this done or something like that. But then it just kind of slides on by. So I think, you know, um, it's it's definitely good to have good intentions, but you need to follow up with your good intentions because otherwise, good intentions really are not gonna mean anything if you don't actually get done what you intended to get done. You yeah, you're gonna do it. Yeah, if you say you're going to do it, it's, it's something you have now taken the responsibility to to accomplish it. And sometimes we are, have a tendency to bite off more than we can chew. We always we, we want to say yes, we want to say yes, and sometimes we get ourselves into a circle of I've got too much to do. And you know the the old saying: if you chase two rabbits, you're not going to catch either one of them. Yes, Gail. changed a little bit which was a help is when that clock was removed from that wall up there larry barker i don't know how many times i heard him say that clock should never have been put up there but he put it up there okay <laughs> and uh <clears throat> but the, the desire was to get rid of it so the clock watchers would not worry about it at that time 
Everybody's got a pocket watch. They've always got a wrist watch or a pocket watch, one of the two. They don't need a clock up there. But up here, if the preacher wants to keep track of time of his sermon, he's got very, uh, a very good thing to, to do that with. Mm -hmm. And it, it's somewhat necessary. But even then, I don't know how many preachers I saw take their wristwatch off and lay it on the counter up there on the podium. Mm -hmm. And he kept track of the time himself that way. That's the responsibility. Yep. He felt, they felt, that when they reached a certain time, it was time to draw the, the, the sermon to a close. Now, I had a, I had occasion to teach some classes in public service Indiana's workshops. Some of them were very good, very interesting. Don't know that I made it that way. It's just that it worked out that way. But I had one in Plainfield, and it was a mix of linemen and meter technicians, which that's what I was. I decided to change things around a lot. So I looked up some very technical information in a book. I decided to see how long that would last. So when I got up there that day, I started teaching from that book. Five minutes later, I had a guy hold up his hand. He said, Gail, he said, this is too technical for us. I, I said, I'm glad you spoke up. He was an old meter man, meter technician. He had transferred that job to a line, lineman job. So he had the benefit of both, the knowledge of two different jobs. And I told him, I said, man, I'm sure glad you spoke up. I've been waiting for this for five minutes. Mm -hmm. So we changed the subject from that point on. Things went well. Right. You got to have the subject that they're interested in <clears throat> to hold them accountable and responsible both. Yep. All right, stand ring the bell. Um, on Sunday, what I want to do is I want to talk about the parable of talents. I think that's a great section of scripture to look at, you know, responsibility and accountability. Because as we've been given talents by God, we are responsible to use them well, and we will help. We be will be held accountable to that. And then, in on page thirty-two, you have this blank space at the bottom. Um, what is a shepherd responsible for? What is a deacon responsible for? What's an evangelist responsible for? What is a member responsible for? Make some notes on that. I'd like to talk about that on Sunday. What are we responsible for in the different roles? Because different roles have different responsibilities. Uh, some of them, you know, every one of them are responsible for some things. But some of them have specific responsibilities. And I'd like to talk about what that is. And then anything else that you guys want to talk about. Uh, you saved a lot of your comments that you didn't use tonight. If you want to bring them to Sunday, we can talk about that. But then let's talk about this. We'll wrap this up. And then we may get started in Lesson 5, uh, depending on how that goes. But we will get to back together on Sunday morning.